Hello, in this presentation I will introduce the fundamentals of Robot Image Space Visual Servoid. I would like to thank my colleague Juan Ernesto Solanes for his helpful comments on this topic. The aims of the presentation are, on the one hand, to understand the problem of control with Visual Servoid, that is, based on features extracted from images, as a feedback for our control system. We will first relate how 3D points project on the image plane using the pinhole camera model and then relate the camera movement with the observed pixels movement on the images. Finally, we will obtain a kinematic control law and we will show some examples to see how the proposed controller works. In our problem statement, we have a camera with a free movement, that is, we can establish an arbitrary linear and angular direction of the reference frames associated to the camera and we want to control the position of such reference uh, frame based on its linear and angular velocities represented here by the, the purple uh, arrows. The reference uh, of frame of the camera to be moved is uh, represented here by the red, green and blue arrows. The problem to be solved consists in determining a control law to move the camera to a position so that the observed image resembles or it's identical to a reference image. Thus, the camera initially observes the object from uh, a position, however, given a reference image, it should have been observed from another position, but we don't know that position. So, actually this position that we don't know, it is highlighted here by the orange border. The information that we have been provided are some points or characteristics of the image that we will associate to other points on the reference image. The difference in pixels between those points will define an error to be minimized. Thus, the controller should provide a movement such that it moves the camera from our current position to the orange one. For simplicity, we will assume that we also know the depth at which the current and reference uh, points are and this is associated with the z-coordinate of the point. We will see later why, we'll make, why we make this assumption and what it implies. A point P in a 3D space defined by its x, y and z-coordinates it is projected onto the image as some u and v coordinates. Ideally, this projection passes through a point on the camera located at the distance f from the coordinate system. This is the focal length. Here, I have included uh, the formulas typically used for uh, this type of camera models in which the intrinsic parameters of the camera are the focal length, the coordinates of the optical center, uc and yc, as well as the parameters alpha, which represent the ratio between the world units and pixels. This model can be used both to obtain an image point from the 3D point and vice versa. That is, from an image point we can obtain the x and y coordinates of an homogeneous point, that is, a point that depends on the depth uh, uh, that will be provided in a different coordinate, so this depth will provide different coordinate values. We will consider these homogeneous points as if they were the points on the image, since they are obtained from them. Now, if the camera's reference uh, frame moves uh, with a linear velocity vz and an angular velocity omega z, then the coordinates of the point p with respect to the camera frame itself acquire velocity. The expression I show here, it is actually a well-known expression in 3D spatial movement and determines the speed of a point that it is observed from the camera's reference frame moving at a certain linear and angular velocities. Therefore, the speeds will be observed in the image as the derivatives of the homogeneous points as indicated here. As it can be seen, they have a linear relationship with respect to the linear and angular velocities of the reference frame. Therefore, we can express the homogeneous coordinates as a linear relationship obtaining a Jacobi matrix, also known in the field of visual feedback control as interaction matrix. 
for each point of the image I, I will, uh, we will have actually a Jacobian matrix of two rows and six columns relating those velocities. The uh, velocities of the point with the linear and angular velocities of the camera. This expression depends on the coordinates of the point but also on, on its depth. This is something that we will discuss below. In any case, it's worth mentioning that for the Jacobian matrix to be a full rank matrix, we need at least three points, otherwise the problem is redundant, which means that we might have multiple solutions. While if we have more points, more than three, then the problem will become a regression problem since we will not be able to establish a movement satisfying all restrictions, except obviously in an ideal world without noise and perfect models of course. Uh, which is, um, this is one of the most common scenarios uh, to use uh, uh, more points, more than three points. As already mentioned, the interaction matrix depends on the point depth. This value must be estimated since it's a priori we don't know this value. In any case, two approximations are usually considered. In the first one, the absurd coordinates of the image and depth estimation of those points is considered. In the second scenario, the coordinates of the reference points and their depth are considered instead. The second approximation has the main advantage that the interaction matrix is a constant matrix as long as the reference point remains uh, unchanged. However, a frequently uh, used approximation is to use the mean of both approximations as we will see. The movement induced in the image plane of a pure rotation by using the characteristics of, uh, detected on the image using the first expression implies linear correction which is represented by the movement uh, that uh, red points have towards the blue ones with the arrows in red. On the other hand, it can be seen that in a similar way the movement caused by the, uh, the use of the second approximation is like uh, the, the one expression that with the, using the blue arrows. Both movements imply that the correction will perform a displacement and a rotation even, uh, even we know already that this is a pure rotation situation because there's a copying between the variables uh, in the, in the, uh, that you, you can see in the expression of the interaction matrix. For this reason, the mean of both approximations represented by the black uh, sorry, the white um, arrows is usually a, a considered a better approximation since at least the correction will not have uh, the displacement component. A proportional controller on the error between the detected and reference features will allow an exponential convergence using the pseudo inverse of the interaction matrix. The convergence is guaranteed in the proximity of the reference position this is a local asymptotic convergence if we know z and z star. In practice, the region of convergence is reasonably large. Here, we have used a compact notation of the interaction matrices shown be, be, uh, before. So, the actual interaction matrix combines both the observed features and uh, the reference features. But also, the pseudo inverse could be, uh, uh, co could be computed using only the, the observed or only the reference features. Here I show an example with the different control proposals. Below, uh, from left to right, I indicate the control parameter, uh, lambda, as well as the camera intrinsic parameters, the 3D position of four points and its, um, the initial transformation matrix of the camera's reference frame, and also uh, the final transformation matrix uh, to be uh, to achieve. This, this transformation matrix actually it's used to generate the reference points in, uh, on the image that are represented with the blue crosses. As you can be seen, uh, the task consists of reaching a reference position with a rotation in the set axis of the camera. Above, we observe three different simulations corresponding to the case uh, in which we use the depth of the observed points with the interaction matrix LS on the figure on the left. In the middle figure, uh, the depth of the reference points is used uh, with the interaction matrix LS star. And in the image on the right, we use the combination of both. It can be seen that 
For the first case, the, the convergence is exponential and the movement made, uh, made in the image plane is a straight line. I said exponential because, as you can see, the um, intermediate points uh, have, a, a, let's say, a large displacement at the beginning and a small step as long as we uh, converge to the blue crosses. So, uh, uh, in this case, the best of the uh, three uh, simulations that we have presented here is the third one because it is able to obtain uh, a situation with a pure rotation. Uh, now, I show the results of an example of a pure translation. As it can be seen, the reference points also uh, form a square, but a smaller square, as if the points were currently observed with a zoom. The aim of the visual feedback controller will be to zoom out so that the observed points match the reference ones. In this case, the three proposals generate a linear displacement on the z-axis of the camera. They are practically identical. The, the only difference I could appreciate is that the, um, the situation or the, the simulation in the middle provides a slightly faster convergence than the other ones. In this presentation, I have introduced a kinematic uh, control with visual feedback. In the next video, I will explain how to integrate this controller in a robot manipulator. Thank you very much.